Hey, what's up y'all? This is William, the Permaculture Consultant, and today I am headed to Tractor Supply right now. Now the reason I'm going to Tractor Supply is because they have bare root tree of trees available, which is odd and unusual for Tractor Supply. Usually they have potted trees and stuff like that. But I'm gonna show you a permaculture tree guild you can install, you can purchase and install right now. Right now is the perfect time to plant trees. They actually have trees available in the correct season. It's amazing. Um, now I know a lot of people aren't in support of Tractor Supply, and I completely understand that. Um, the reason I'm showing you guys at a Tractor Supply is because it's a store that most people in the United States have access to. You can also take the same principles and apply it to any other type of uh, fruit tree you might have, even your nitrogen fixers, and you can interchange some of the other support species for more favor favorable varieties. But the point of today's episode is that you guys can copy and paste this and plant it as soon as you see this video if you want to. Now they have all these potted trees over here which are considerably more expensive than the bare root trees that they have inside, but I also don't want anything this large or potted. This right here is going to be the one I'm getting and it's 15 bucks, Platinum Kiefer. Alrighty, I got the the tree and its companions here. I'll tell you guys what I got here in a second. Um, I don't know what's going on lately, but there were some crazies out in town. There was some like old timer up at the the desk. He just walked up with a dog bed, like demanding people measure it for him and stuff. He done walked past two or three tape measures on the way to the front desk and was still losing his dog on mine. But anyway. We're going to plant some trees and the world's going to be better. Uh, we're actually, oh, I should tell you that we are at my father-in-law Swales uh, at his property, at his homestead. And we are going to finish planting, or not finish planting, but we're going to plant this guild on his top swale right over here. You can kind of see the orange flags at the tip of this little tree right here. Yeah, we're going to pick one of those orange flags. Um... Each one signifies something different. He's doing the NAP pattern, which is the nitrogen apple pear. And the whole point of that, that was created or made famous by the great Stefan Sokoviak. Um, the NAP pattern stands for, like I said, nitrogen apple pear. The reason it's nitrogen apple, the reason for that pattern is because you have a nitrogen fixer, apple, pear, nitrogen fixer, apple, pear apple and pear can be any kind of fruit trees that work for your area they just signify or they um yeah they signify two different cultivars two different trees you don't want the same tree right next to each other because if one pest comes it wipes out all the trees that are right next to each other that are of the same cultivar so what we're going to do is mix it up um, also the benefit of the NAP is that you have a nitrogen fixer in between your apple and pear. So over time, it'll passively fertilize your apple and pear. Um, they also, uh, play host to all the beneficial insects that will protect your, uh, trees from those pests in the future. So let's get to planting. I'll do a better explanation of that in a future video and stuff. Um, that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is a permaculture fruit tree guild that you can buy at tractor supply right now or your local nursery so for those of you that follow permapastures farm which is probably a hundred percent of you and if you don't then you definitely should um this is the same food force that we filmed the proof permaculture works video so check that out if you want to see this in a vegetative state uh, plenty of cardboard. The ladder is there for some pruning that we're doing on some larger apples and pears and stuff. Um, and remember the swale in this case is downhill of the food forest. Here's the food forest. 
and it is downhill and capturing all the runoff that comes from the food forest. This is where we're gonna plant the tree. Now, the variety I got was a keeper pear. Uh, this is one of the varieties that my father-in-law wanted. Um, when I was over there, I asked them like, hey, here's what they have available. Which one do you want? And this one is good for zone five through nine. And this is, I believe, 8A where we are here in uh, Texas. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the tree itself planted. Now this tree has a graft union and you can see it right here. This is the rootstock, probably from an Anjou pear. And this is the kefir pear part. I want this part as high above the ground as possible. So I'm gonna try to plant this thing right here um and i also want the the predominant wind is coming from the that way um it's obviously the evening right now that's west as you can see the setting sun and stuff like that and the predominant wind usually comes from that direction so i want this graft union i want the strong side facing the predominant wind and it's going to blow against the graft union on its strong side. If I faced it the other way, then that's a really, really weak side, and there's a chance that it breaks off at the graft union. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull this flag out, and put it right here. I'm gonna keep all of this. This is gonna come in handy here in a second. And I'm going to dig a hole just big enough to fit this guy in. I'm not gonna do any double digging methods or anything like that. I'm just gonna cut, I'm just gonna dig a hole big enough for this tree. So if I did a double dig method, if I dug way more than what was needed for this tree, then there's a higher chance that that soil is gonna compact around the tree and make it harder for the A, for the microbes to flourish, and also for the tree roots to uh, expand and uh, you know take over this area. Now this is the mound of the swale. This is the very top of the berm. Um, this is where you want to plant it in any area that's not an arid environment. If I was in an arid environment, then I would want to plant on the ditch, the bottom ditch part of the swale. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just dig this part up real quick. Just pull this to the side, pull any competitors out and throw them in the ditch. There we go. And that's a, still even a little bit bigger than we want for this tree. And I want it to be planted about that high. And I want it facing that direction. And I want this straight up and down. So I need to dig out a little bit more. Oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you, the reason I want a bare root tree instead of a potted tree is that a potted tree has a very specific type of soil in the pot itself. Most likely a dead soil. <laughs> Most likely dirt, actually. It's just black dirt. Um, the reason I want a bare root tree is that it's going to adapt to the native soil a lot faster than a potted tree is going to. It's going to go through a root shock as soon as those roots start expanding past the potted uh, soil itself, once it starts hitting the native soil. So... I want a bare root tree because they are going to perform better. They're going to be better adapted to this environment and they're going to outcompete any potted tree. Even if it's like a four year old potted tree, this will outcompete it in a year. This is only like a, I would say a one year old whip and that tree is planted. I'm going to keep the tag on here for now until we get some permanent tags out here. So we don't forget what tree this is. I've got the graft union facing the dominant wind for my area. I have it high, as high above the ground as I can. And uh, now I'm going to add cardboard. Uh, now, uh, I had a couple questions about where's your cardboard hookup before. Um, my father-in-law said, if you can find furniture or appliance stores near you, that's the best place to get cardboard. So I'm going to take my handy dandy knife and you wanna know more about this knife, check out my last video. And I'm gonna cut a Y in it. And this method I actually learned from my dad. Um, he's the one that came up with this method of cutting a Y in it and then facing it to where the Y catches on the tree 
instead of sliding off. So fold this back. Put this around the tree. Fold that under. And I'm not going to worry about clearing any of the vegetation around that. Under this cardboard and underneath the mulch that I'm going to put on top of this, um, all of that stuff is going to decompose and create some sort of fertilizer for this tree. So I'm not concerned with it at all. And go thick on cardboard. You don't have to do just one layer. If you're in an area where there's a ton of weeds and stuff, uh, go thick on the cardboard. Bill Mullison said, um, take the Sunday newspaper, fold it in half, and that's a good start. <laughs> you can go up to three feet before the contact between the mulch and the soil becomes anaerobic. So anywhere between here and three feet, you're in the you're in the good in the green. Now these, I'm gonna cut off these extra pieces right here and then just kind of shove them underneath. Um, I want to keep my biggest piece on top. There we go. There we go. And if it seems like I'm a little rushed, I am just trying to get this video done for you guys before the sun sets. And there we go. Now, before I put mulch on it, which actually the stuff in this bag right here, uh, I'm gonna dump on top of this, but before I do that, I'm going to start planting my other support species. Um, also show you guys what I picked up at, at Tractor Supply. Right here is a blueberry. This is gonna go exactly where the camera is right there. Uh, it's gonna be, I'm gonna use the shovel method just like my dad has shown you before in videos. I'm gonna use the shovel method of measurements and stuff. Uh, this bla blueberry, this is a silver dollar blueberry. It's good for zone five to 10. This is gonna go right where the camera is and that's gonna get its own little cardboard and mulch ring. This is another blueberry of a different cultivar. This one is a silver dollar and this one is a misty. Um, they also have different harvest dates. So that way you can have blueberries for an extended period of time throughout the year. This has a late spring harvest, uh, harvest date and this one has a summer to fall harvest date. So that way you don't run out of blueberries throughout the year. Try to stagger your harvest dates if you can. Um, this one is gonna go right over here. Now the ground cover for this guild is going to be strawberry. Uh, these, I messed up and I bought two of these. I didn't realize that 10 plants came per box. So there's that, I have plenty of strawberries to plant for sure. Um, and these are going to spread out quite a bit. I would much rather have a strawberry ground cover than a Bahia grass ground cover or a Bermuda grass ground cover. Um, either way, the ground is going to be covered. You can either pick or nature can pick. And I can almost guarantee you if nature picks, it's not going to be something that you're going to want to eat. You might as well replace what nature is going to pick with something that you want to eat. Um, these are the ever, ever sweet strawberries. Uh, and they have a summer to fall harvest. Um, the other box I got has a uh, early summer harvest, uh, late spring harvest. Um, so I'll get those probably planted somewhere else because they don't do as well in the sun as these guys do. And this swale right here gets a pretty decent amount of sun, especially in the summer. And those um, I'm gonna plant around this tree here. The other thing I got were onions. Um, these are going to act as the root layer, basically, of the forest. Uh, this is the, this is going to act as the overstory. This is the shrub and bush layer. These are the ground covers. This, oh, I got onions dropping. Oh, I got a rip in the bag. I hope I didn't lose any on the way. Um, this is going to act as your root layer. Same thing with garlic. This will also help deter deer and your canna lilies, which are going to be, um, these are really good for pollinators. Uh, so these are gonna attract your, your bees, your butterflies, the red wasp, which are the good ones. Uh, that's what these are gonna attract right here. So let's get to planting. So immediately around this tree, 
I'm going to plant the garlic and the uh, canna lilies. Now the measurement I'm going to use is basically the head of the shovel. Where the uh, step starts on the shovel, that's where I'm going to plant a circle around this tree. I'm going to do two canna lilies and uh, garlic and onions to fill the gaps. These canna lilies I'm going to plant in line with the swale right here just for aesthetic reasons really there's no no purpose outside of that for the most part i'm gonna get my measurement here's the step on this black line right here i'm gonna cut an x or across depending on how you look at it push these off and down into the soil now i have a uh square i'm gonna take my little beater knife and i'm gonna dig with it Push this into the ground. And I'm just planting it so where the tip of the canna lily is just barely sticking up past the cardboard. Keep in mind that I am going to cover this in mulch, so it's not like I'm planting these too shallow. Bam, there's that. And now, this angle, I'm going to plant, let's say, onions. Let's put some onions in there. In the same distance as the candle lilies, basically. Also, this cardboard acts as a visual for where I'm planting as well. So that's another added benefit. Plant another onion right here. Now I'm gonna plant my garlic. In this spot and in this spot over here. Now to plant garlic, you don't necessarily have to go uh, and buy garlic from Tractor Supply. You can actually just buy organic garlic from the grocery store. Break it up, break the cloves up, just like this. Plant, oh, plant this and um, yeah, make sure the root side is down. Plant that. And there you go, you have garlic. There we go. There's canna lily, canna lily, garlic, onion, garlic, onion, er, garlic, onion, garlic. Now you wanna be careful with what you plant directly around the tree. You wanna make sure um, you're not planting anything that you have to dig up around the base of this tree onions and garlic you just pull straight up out of the ground that's not going to cause any damage to your roots but if i have to throw a shovel into the ground right next to the base of this tree then i'm definitely going to kill some roots on this tree and i want to avoid that uh so if you do plant let's say comfrey which you definitely should and if you want some go to permapasturesfarm.com uh, they have plenty of comfrey there if you plant comfrey around the base of your tree, make sure that you're just using it for chop and drop. Don't harvest the comfrey roots around the base of your tree because you're gonna damage the tree in the process. Or if you do put it around the base of your tree, make sure it's at least out here next to your blueberries or closer to your blueberries or even in between your blueberries and your tree. Keep in mind for the blueberry uh, roots as well, you don't wanna damage those. Another design thing you can keep in mind is that there's a, ditch side on that side of the swale and the walking path is on this side of the swale. You can also use your ditch as a walking path, but keep in mind for those rainy events. You don't necessarily, unless you have like rain boots, you don't necessarily want to use the ditch part sometimes um, for your walk path. It can be super muddy sometimes after a heavy rain, depending on your type of soil. Um, so what you could do is place all your support species on the ditch side of the swale and all your species that you're going to harvest or eat in the future on the walking side of the swale. That's just a little design thing you can keep in mind if you want to. If not, that's cool too. I'm going to plant these strawberries. Now there's 10 of these, 10 plants in this box. Um, 
Also, I'm gonna use this box as part of a, uh, or in place of some cardboard. Um, you might be worried about some of the ink and stuff like that in your cardboard. Don't worry about it because 99% of the ink that they use now is all soy based. Uh, you also might be worried about some of the shellac that they put on the cardboard. And I don't know that I would worry about that either. Bill Mullison and Jeff Lawton both used carpet, like old used carpet, shag carpet to mulch with. And it eventually, actually, no, I don't think it did break down. I think it's still there, uh, but it still kind of served the same purpose. Um, so there we go. All this is, they might even say somewhere on here, but this is all basically soy based ink. It's all gonna decompose. So I'm gonna get this bag open. Hey, JT, you want to be on camera? No. He didn't want to be on camera, y'all. <laughs> Gotta say, I'm not entirely impressed with the packaging. It's more aesthetic instead of uh, functional for the plants. Now, I want these to grow and take over basically the area. Um, so I'm going to plant these around the periphery, around the entire guild that I've just put in place. I'm going to let these spread out. And as they spread out, if they get a little bit too thick, I can always basically replicate them. I can propagate them, I mean. I can dig up some of the ones that are a little too thick and then plant those in different areas. So that's cool. If you have uh, strawberries that are healthy, um, you really only need to buy them once and then just keep propagating them from there unless you are in a hurry. I think I'm gonna plant these mostly on the outside of this cardboard. my mom is watching this video, she's probably cringing at how uh, non-gentle I'm being with plants. If you ever watch mom plant, she is so doggone gentle with these trees, with the just all plants in general. It fresh, used to frustrate me and dad <laughs> how gentle she was. <laughs> like they're just little babies or something. Um, so I've got the strawberries planted around the outside of this. I've got my two candle lilies onion onion garlic in the small x's uh got some more onions and garlic around this front edge right here now i'm going to take this this is what you mostly pay for at a nursery all the amendments that they add to the the pots basically or the bags and stuff you're not really paying much for the plant itself or the time it takes to grow the plant you're mostly paying for amendments so you want to make sure you use those um that's what you're paying for. So I'm just gonna kind of spread it around in these different holes. There we go. And I will use this uh, for the blueberries here in a second. Now the first blueberry I'm going to plant is gonna be in line. And I'm gonna use my shovel, put it at the base of the tree and where this little handle, this uh, rubberized handle starts, that's where I'm gonna plant the blueberry right there. Now this soil is so soft, I can really just use my hands, which is awesome. You can't do that in a lot of places in Texas. And this is going to be the misty blueberry. Now when planting blueberries, a lot of people make the mistake of planting them too deep. Blueberries do not like being deep in the soil. They like being very, very shallow. Um, they will, if they want to go deeper, they'll send some roots down and get deeper if they need to. Damn, there's my blueberry. I'm gonna use my strawberry and blueberry box. I'm gonna cut a Y in it again. And I'm gonna use it as a preliminary mulch layer. Now, typically, if this wasn't the rainy season, um, then I would make sure all this cardboard is soaked before putting it on the ground. Otherwise it might go hydrophobic, but I know it's probably gonna rain or heavy, heavy mist over the night. 
Um, so I'm not really concerned about it at all. Also, the mulch that I'm gonna put on top of it is saturated with water right now. And I'm gonna scoot you guys back right here or so. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this stuff. This is what I was talking about earlier. Just to get it out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and dump this around the base of the tree. Right here is where I'm gonna put my blueberry. And you can mimic the same gills around your blueberries if you'd like. Just depends on how much production you are ready for. Now you see that white fuzzy stuff right there. That is not a good sign. That is an indicator of uh, mildew and anaerobic conditions. That's one of the downsides of getting them shipped in these plastic bags right here. But it is what it is. It's still available. We've had plenty of these be successful from Tractor Supply before. I wouldn't not recommend using Tractor Supply. It's just, if you have the opportunity to support a local business, you definitely should. There we go. And there's my blueberry, just barely in the ground. Now, if you have like a pine needle mulch and stuff like that, blueberries really love pine needle mulch. If you are dead set on adding amendments like compost or fertilizer of any kind, which if it's nitrogen based, please don't. But I'm talking about like fish emulsion or, or whatever, any kind of natural fertilizer, not natural, but appropriate fertilizer, I should say. Anything that's not gonna be a, a salt, basically. Um, you add those amendments to the top of the soil. If you add them into the soil, if you mix them into the soil, then uh, that's not how the roots absorb nutrients. It, it's a long, complicated process. Actually, it's not that complicated. It's just a different video. Just trust me for right now, add your amendments to the top of the surface and allow the rainfall and the microbes to bring them to the plant itself. Hope that made sense. Cut my Y. There we go. And then everything that was in that bag, I'm going to pour around this. I didn't do it on the other blueberry because I added it to this area, but it's not anywhere near the end of the world. That blueberry was $8.99. This blueberry was $10.99. This pear was $14.99. These canna lilies for two, $6.99. This bag of onion, which comes with 60 onions, is $3.99. And this bag of garlic, which comes with three bulbs, was $5.49. That's not a bad investment. Um, especially whenever you consider that you can buy a couple of these and take care of quite a few tree guilds. Uh, and this is a very, very simple, basic tree guild. You can get way more complex with these guilds. Um, but this is just one that is easily available. I know the trolls are going to hit me in the comments. But this one is just easily available at Tractor Supply right now. This can get you food growing so quickly. Like you don't have to wait on shipping. You don't have to trust UPS to you know deliver it on time or anything like that. You can just go pick it up, bring it home and immediately plant it. You can do it as soon as you see this video if you'd like. Get some doggone food growing, no matter where you live. Even if you replicated this in like those big cow mineral tubs, you can grow a tree in those mineral tubs. I would look for maybe more of a dwarf variety this is a semi-dwarf, I believe. No, it's not. It is not semi-dwarf. It is a full size, but you can prune it so where it does behave as a dwarf or a semi-dwarf. Uh, it's just going to require pruning. Now it's time to add the mulch. Now, I know this is a very popular thing to do, but you wanna make sure you don't add mulch directly to your tree. If you do that, it's gonna start rooting around the, the trunk of it. They're gonna root in circles and eventually strangle this tree. So if you dump it next to your, onto your, your uh, trunk right there, just pull it back, pull it back. And then make sure all your cardboard is covered spread it out a little bit i don't in this particular case want to go too thick 
on this mulch because I do have stuff that's gonna be popping up and I don't wanna to give too much of a challenge. I will reapply mulch as the year goes on um, because you'll notice that the microbes in the soil are going to just start breaking this stuff down like crazy. This is aged wood chip mulch. Uh, it got dropped here off of my father-in-law's a couple years ago by chip drop. And ever since then, it's just been breaking down and uh, it's awesome. If you take a handful of it, rub it up against your hands, the stuff that is stuck to your hands is compost. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take this last bucket over here and I'm gonna gently address these uh, blueberries around here. Same principle with the blueberries. Make sure you don't cover them up with wood chips. Pull it out away from the base of the blueberries. You wanna make basically a donut. If you're looking down at it, it looks like a donut. It's a little square donut, but that's okay. And that is a wrap. All right, just as a recap, we have our main, this is gonna be the future overstory. And I'm getting these terms from the seven layers of a food forest. That'll be a future video. But this is going to be the overstory. Around it, we have our two canna lilies. That's your support species. They're gonna bring in pollinators. We have also onions and garlic. The onions are obviously edible, um, but the garlic is gonna obviously edible as well, but it's gonna help deter deer. Now on over here, we have a blueberry. And over here, we have another blueberry. Now, some of the questions that might pop up are like, um, well, why didn't you pay attention to the spacing on the package? Stuff like that, everything's planted too close, you're gonna cause issues, nothing's gonna grow, everything's gonna be in competition. That's not the case in a permaculture design, in a permaculture setup. Because I'm planting in different layers of a food forest, different sections, they're gonna all occupy different sections of a food forest, um, they're not in competition with each other. Then They're in symbiosis with each other. Uh, the, this tree right here is adapted for this area and is going to provide protection after it puts on leaves and spreads out a little bit. It's going to provide, eh, it's going to provide protection for the stuff growing below it. The blueberries right there and over there, they like full sun. That blueberry over there eventually, once it starts getting bigger, is going to protect the trunk of this tree from the western sun. Well, it's, it's gone now, but you get the point, uh, which is a benefit. I would much rather lose a blueberry to the sun than I would uh, a full-blown tree. The tree is going to put out way more production than that blueberry is, so it's just all personal preference at that point. But yeah, you can take this exact guild. It's not the most complex guild in the world. It's a very, very simple guild, but you can purchase it right now and get it planted right now. The dormant season is when you want to plant trees. Um, all the other stuff like the strawberries, the onions, the garlic, and all that stuff, basically just plant those whenever the ground is workable. Uh, and then you can add to this guild in the future. That tree costs 15 bucks. If I were to go to the store, think of it this way. That tree is 15 bucks. I had no other outside inputs applied to that tree. Uh, the wood chip was, the wood chip mulch was free. The cardboard was free. Um, no other outside inputs. How quickly is your return on investment for a $15 bare root tree? The first time that produces fruit, like a, a full load of fruit, it has paid the investment, <laughs> especially if you go to the store and buy pears out of season. Um, and this is gonna taste way, way better uh, it's way better for you. Um, this is your superfood. It's not the garbage that they sell on Amazon or the super supplement stores or anything like that. The food you grow is your uh, superfood. So if you guys would like help with your own properties, uh, if you guys are wanting consultations either on the phone or in person, hit the links down below. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see ya.